Good evening. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are all excited about phase three this Friday. It's beautiful out. I'm wearing something bright because I felt like it went with the weather. Hope you guys are all amazing and well and enjoying your summer thus far. I'm going to do the normal, so I will answer your guys' questions. If you write them in the comments, I will answer them. If not, I will go through ones that came through uh, throughout the week. I will also do some real estate updates locally and a bit further, as well as some happy news. So hope you guys are all, again, amazing and well. And I will jump into the questions. So the first question is from Rose and Barry. So Rose and Barry said, I own a home, but I'm planning on moving into an apartment. Do you know if I should put my daughter's name on it? Or are there any loopholes Read the government getting a lot of the money? I don't know if I can leave her some of her inheritance early. Thank you, Rose, for asking. Uh, that is, to be honest, kind of an accounting question. But I do know about a reverse mortgage. So if you're over the age of 55, there's a reverse mortgage and they'll do up to 50% on your home. So let's just say it's worth a million just for easy numbers sake. They'll give you a mortgage up to 500000 You could have declared bankruptcy before. You could have bad credit. You could anything it's not like getting a regular mortgage again it only goes up to 50 percent you can't take the whole million out but you can go up to five hundred thousand and you could keep no uh you know like monthly payments so it's neat because it's not like a regular mortgage and you're like oh i haven't had a mortgage in so long and now i'm gonna have these payments so you can actually keep it with no payments so you could take out that extra 500 and you mentioned giving your daughter an inheritance early so you could do that and just so you know the reverse mortgage payments normally are in between four and four and a half percent or you can do them with payments, which just pays down that 500,000 faster. So obviously if you don't do any payments, when you sell the home, you still owe that 500,000 uh, at that four or four and a half percent. But if you do the payments every month, then it might be 470 at the end or depending obviously how long you own it after you take that reverse mortgage. So thank you for asking. Uh, the next thing is about a graduation trip. I know a lot of kids, even myself in grade eight, for example, we have like a grade eight grad trip. So there is this little island off of Maine in the States and there's only 700 residents and only 13 of them are in grade 12. And um, eight of them lived on the island and five like ferried in from somewhere else. And anyways, they had saved over $8,000 and like prior classmates of them, theirs had gone to say Paris and Norway and so forth. And they were thinking of going to either Greece or South Korea. And they just figured with the pandemic and so forth, they didn't think that it was really fair to be off celebrating in the world when so many local businesses and people were hurting. So they took that 8,000 uh, and change dollars and they donated it to local charities. So I thought that was cute because obviously 17 and 18 year olds are not always thinking about that. So for them to do that was a nice example for other people. And I shouldn't judge that 17, 18 year olds aren't thinking that way, but um, I just did ageism. But they're proving that there is no such thing as people that cannot give regardless of age and they're not spoiled young children, etc. cetera. Um, the next question comes from Cam in Orangeville. So Cam in Orangeville said, my girlfriend and I are looking at some prefab homes. What do you think of those? Thank you for your direct question, Cam. So I'm fine with prefab homes. Obviously they're built in a warehouse and so forth so they don't have the elements behind them so they don't have, oh it was sitting without the roof on and then the subfloor um, you know, got wet and, and what have you and it's climatized, it's controlled and to be honest they're usually built better. The problem with it is, which I don't know if that's what you're asking, is it's harder to finance because banks obviously like things that they can take over if somebody doesn't pay so let's just say for example you have to pay two hundred thousand dollars for the lot and three hundred thousand dollars for the building for easy number sake that three hundred thousand dollar building they're not going to want to bring it to you till you've paid for it in full they're not going to want to bring it on their truck and so forth but a bank is not going to want to give you that three hundred thousand when it's somewhere off site they obviously want it on site so it's just harder to finance so i don't know if that's what you're asking uh, but it is harder to finance. So you might have to put more down or maybe do a private until it's actually on the property and then you could get a regular mortgage. So not sure if that if that is what you're asking, but hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Thank you, Cam, for asking. Next little story before I get into real estate is a girl that basically went from flipping burgers and french fries, deep frying french fries at McDonald's to being in the Olympics. So she was raised by her grandparents and got this part-time job to help them out and she kind of realized that she had a natural athletic ability when she was in her early teens and she won, I forget if it was third or fourth place in some junior Olympics thing that they had going on. 
uh, in the States, and then her grandpa died a week before one of these national tryouts, and obviously she didn't do the greatest, uh, but there was just a tryout for um, the Olympics, like not Olympics, but like pre-Olympic team for Tokyo, and she jumped like six point, how far was it? It was crazy far. 6.96 meters, which is over 22 feet. I don't even think I can jump six feet this way, let alone 22 feet that way. Um, but she said the most important thing is having confidence in yourself regardless what is around you. So she hopes that she can encourage other people to have confidence in themselves and youngsters to go after their dreams. So I liked that. And um, one more question before we get into real estate. So Kaylin from Stroud, hopefully I'm saying your name properly, Kaylin. Uh, it says, I currently live at my parents, but would love to buy a home. I have some saved, but nothing substantial. Do you think I should use those government incentives I have heard about? Uh, thank you, Kaylin, for asking. To be honest, I wouldn't use them if you don't have to. The problem with them is, is that when you sell your home and give them the money back, they get, you know, five or 10% depending what you took. So if you bought a new build or a, uh, a home that was already owned by somebody else. That's how it determines if you get the five or 10%, but you have to give them that five or 10% back. But they didn't, you know, for example, paint all the rooms. They didn't put that backsplash in the kitchen. They didn't renovate the kitchen. They didn't do all the landscaping. They didn't fix the roof. They didn't do all these things that you've done over the years that you've owned it. So I don't really like it. It's kind of a bit of a scam and they get extra money from people. So I personally don't like it. Um, so that is just my opinion on that because I don't like when people put their sweat equity into something and then somebody else gets a piece of the pie. So that's me personally, but thank you for asking. And then one more thing. I lied. It was one more thing. I said one more thing before, um, before real estate is a little bit of dog therapy. So as many people know, there are, you know, service dogs for people that are blind or get, um, uh, seizures or, or so forth regularly. Uh, but dogs also do a lot for people in distress and with anxiety and so forth. And I'm sure you guys all know about what happened with the condo uh, Surfside uh, building in Miami. And um, they just brought in nine golden retrievers to help with the first responders that are all in there. And so I thought that was really cute. So a lot of them, um, they have videos where either they smile when they see the dogs or they, you know, get down on their knees and start, you know, crying or sobbing or what have you. But I always love dogs, so these dogs are going in to have their, con not their condolences, but support these people that are, are in there and, and so forth. So I just love anything with puppies and the community helping one another in whatever way they can and keeping each other safe. Um, just a reminder about our $2,500 giveaway before I say about real estate. So on the first of every month, we're obviously halfway through July, on the first of every month, we uh, knock on somebody's door and give them a check for $2,500. So if you guys know anybody that you think is deserving, it could be a happy story, it could be a sad story. We don't tell people's personal stories. So if it was something sad, don't worry, we're not going to tell that. If they're a private person, even if they're not a private person, we're not going to tell that. Or if it's a happy uh, story, we're not going to tell that as well. We will just surprise somebody on the first of every month so you could send in your video or your written submission to info at cripshomes.com. Again, info at cripshomes.com. You do not have to have any relation to Crips Homes Neither do, or Crips Realty, but neither do they either. They just have to live in Simcoe County and they have to be over the age of 18, okay? Okay, so real estate stuff. Again, if you guys have any questions, you can write it in the um, blurb. If not, I will just talk away. Uh, so they just did a recent study by ARIA, which is the Ontario Real Estate Association. So they found that 46% of people under the age of 45 are actually considering leaving Ontario, which is crazy because of the average price of a sale of a sale of a home is insanity to me. So that that's crazy. Almost 50% of people under 45 are considering leaving because they can't afford a home. And then when they looked at people under the age of 29, 33% said that they were considering leaving. So 11% said they were definitely leaving and 22% said they were very likely to leave. And then in the past year of everybody in Ontario, regardless of what age they are, 27% said they were considering going to a different province or um, country altogether. And 18% um, of those that already owned homes said that they would leave. And 37% of people that do not homes considered leaving. And then when they looked at people just under the age of 45, 34% uh, of people that owned homes said they would consider leaving. And like I mentioned before, 46% of people, those are non-homeowners, 
said that they would leave because they cannot afford it. Uh, and then 46% of immigrants said that they would consider leaving Ontario because of the price of homes, which again is crazy. And this isn't like a survey that was done in Arkansas or Texas or whatever. This was literally just done in Ontario last week. So it's very high and kind of crazy. Um, so how did people rate home ownership in that same survey in Ontario? So 44% of people said that they would love to own a home. 31% uh, said they're like, so, so, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not that important to them. And 24% said they were happy renting the rest of their lives. And 65% um, of people that were surveyed on the same thing um, who do not own a, own a home said that they would like to own a home. So that is obviously a, a fair chunk. And then 80% of people that are 18 to 29 said in the future they would like to own a home. They didn't mention about leaving. It was a different you know, um, question. They didn't mention about leaving, but 80% said they do want to own a home in the future. 56% of people surveyed said they were pessimistic and don't think they will ever be able to afford a home in a desirable area that they would like. And just over a quarter of the people that were surveyed said that they're still optimistic, but with each passing week, they're getting a little bit more discouraged and pessimistic. And then 18% of people said they're always optimistic and hope to one day buy uh, their first home. And they're not pessimistic at all. 56% uh, of people looking said they wanted a detached home. So they weren't looking for a townhome, they weren't looking for a condo, strictly detached home, 56% of people. And, um, oh yeah, 71% uh, of people said they think that people's affordability should be higher up on the government's priority list of buying homes. So all these people aren't considering leaving the province. Um, and there's actually a place in Collingwood, it's an engineering company, and they don't want to lose engineers to the states or to different provinces, etc. So they're giving $20,000 to their employees if they buy a home locally. Uh, if they rent, they don't give them any money, um, or if they buy one three hours away, they don't give them any money, but if they buy locally, they give them $20,000 towards their home, which I thought was interesting. Um, some people are saying like to help the first time buyers, they should give them more tax credits. Uh, some people are saying that they should give incentives to people that already own homes if they make their home more energy efficient, but none of those things have officially happened. They're just what people are saying, uh, or trying to, you know, push into, um, you know, government and so forth. But then on the complete opposite scale of that, so, you know, people saying they can't afford homes, luxury homes have skyrocketed since the pandemic. So in the GTA in 2021, there were 414 properties that sold over $4 million. And obviously the average sales price is not $4 million. So for 414 to sell is a lot, but just to give you a bit more of an idea, um, La not last year because I want to count last year because it was obviously a bit weird with the pandemic at the beginning so we don't want to compare like oh yeah that's when nobody knew what was going to happen in the world so I'll compare it to 2019 so 414 properties over four million dollars sold so far from January to the end of June and in 2019 from January to the end of June I just saw a pigeon land on my porch or my um, balcony which I never like um, I saw it on the screen. Um, so in 2019, at the same time, January to the end of June, there was only 103. So 103 homes selling over 4 million, and this year 414. So that's over 300% that those luxury homes were up. And then, um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, so not the over 4 million, but still luxury homes, but a bit less, is 1 million to 4 million. So from January 1st to the end of June, there was over 29,000 of those homes that sold, um, which is up over 240% over 2019. And then it's happening in other places, not just GTA. So in Vancouver, their homes, uh, their average sales price is higher. So they did their luxury uh, sales at over 10 million. So their over 10 million homes, $10 million homes was up over 300% as well. Comparing it to 2019, the amount of homes that sold, not their average sales price, okay? So what is contributing to all the luxury craziness uh, home sales is the lack of inventory, but mostly it's the interest rate, mostly it's people taking their money out of the stock market, mostly it's people wanting to have bigger homes, bigger lots, etc. since COVID. Um, what am I missing? And then just people moving out of urban city centers that normally like to be in Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, etc. Um, so I've talked about this before, 
but you know that they're trying to get the federal tax for um, vacancies. So basically, let's just say somebody from China or Russia owns a home in Toronto, and they uh, you know only visit it one month a year or whatever. They're still trying to put that tax there. They're thinking that it'll start in 2022, and they're thinking that in four years it'll bring in over 700 million in revenue and added revenue. So they'll help uh, low-income housing with that money. In BC, they so they started the foreign tax, uh, which we then followed suit in 2017 by Kathleen Wynne, which is 15%. And since then, BC has put theirs up to 20%. So basically, BC usually starts it out first, and then we follow suit. I can't see for some reason on Facebook, it used to tell me people's names, and now I just see their little bubbles. So if I don't recognize your little bubble, I'm sorry if I don't say hi to you. Um, so what is happening with rentals? I, I said like luxury. I said people that can't get into the market. So rentals. So rentals are also going crazy because obviously the average sales price to get into a property is high. So therefore a lot of people can't afford it. So things that used to be $2,800 for rent are now $3,700 for rent, etc. And they're getting bidding wars because there's so many uh, renters that need places to go. Then they're paying $400 more than the people are asking for rent, etc. Some of them are saying here's six months up front. Uh, and so forth. So the landlords are definitely in the driver's seat for that as opposed to the renters, which before the beginning of COVID was not uh, how it was. And renters were a bit more in the driver's seat because all the students fled that, you know, were going to school here or people used to rent them out Airbnb and now they're not. So then they had all these vacancies. So the tenants were in the driver's seat for a while and now the landlords are back to the driver's seat. But obviously it's just rippled into the, um, the sales have rippled into the rentals. So 90% is actually 90.8 or whatever percent of detached homes in Canada are owner occupied. So it only leaves less than 10% for rentals, but obviously there's apartments and condos and duplexes, triplex, et cetera. But just to give you an idea, and since the pandemic has started, the average rent has gone up between 4.5 and 8.4%. And some people say like, how could it have gone up that much if they're not allowed to raise rents during the pandemic? which is true. However, let's just say somebody moves out. So they move out of their place July 1st, for example, and they were paying 2000. The landlord doesn't have to go, you know, oh, stay at 2000. They could rent it for 2800 if they want. They don't have to, you know, stay at that rate or do the little rate that it normally goes up per year, say 2.2 or whatever. Um, but this year they're not allowed to do that. But if the people move out completely, the landlord can, can do any new rate that they like. So like I said, from 2000 to 2800 or 2000 to 3000, et cetera. So that is how that is going um, with rentals. Um, there's a new record uh, interest rate, which is the five-year interest rate, which is 0.98, which is crazy cheap. Um, back in the day, they had like 15% interest rates and 18 and 23, etc. I wasn't in the market back then. I'm glad I wasn't because that is insane. Uh, so if you had a million dollar mortgage right now at 0.98, your um, interest would be 10000 for the year, which is $833.33 per month. You would then have your principal on top of it. So it's not like you can buy a million dollar home and pay only $833 a month. You still have your principal on top of that, but that is still crazy cheap to get that amount of money, you know, a million dollars for only eight thirty three dollars a month, okay? Uh, especially considering that if you did like a loan shark or private mortgage, for example, they normally charge about 10%, so you'd be paying... Um, 833 just for a hundred thousand, let alone a million. Okay. Sorry if there's lots of numbers in there. Um, so since the announcement of the crazy low interest rate, that 0.98 that I said for five years, so TREB, the Toronto real estate board, they actually call it, there's two R's in it now, the Toronto regional real estate board, but I still call it the old fashioned, uh, cause that's what it was called when I started. So they guesstimated what would happen the rest of this year. And originally they said there would be 105,000 uh, sales and that the average price would be a million and 25,000. But now that the interest rate has dropped, now they said there's going to be 115,000 sales and they think the average sales price is going to be a million 70. So they think that there's going to be 10,000 more sales than they originally thought and they think there's going to be an average sales price of 45,000 more due to the low interest rates because more people can buy. Um, so the second half of 2021 is still supposed to be a low shortage and low interest rates, hence keeping the prices high. So if you're wondering what is going to happen the rest of 2021, um, that is still the projected, uh, you know, for basically any economist. And um, 
what else? So last summer, CMHC, which is a Canadian Mortgage Housing Corporation, they said, hey, you guys need to have higher um, credit scores. You can't borrow money from your parents or your sister or whoever as a down payment anymore. But the problem with that was is that the other two companies that also lend uh, or insure people's money if they're putting less than 20% down did not follow suit. So uh, Genworth and Canada Guarantee. So then people, instead of using CMHC, would just go to those other places. So if their credit score wasn't high enough, they just go over there. So now CMHC has taken that out because they realized how much interest they were losing because it was just going to their competitors. So now they've taken that out. So if you have a lower interest rate, or not interest rate, a lower credit score, or you do have to more borrow money from somebody for a down payment, now CMHC will also do it as well, okay? So CMHC, Genworth and Canada Guarantee, if you're putting down 20% or less, they are insuring your mortgage. So if you don't pay your mortgage, insurance covers it. So it's not like, oh, it just goes to nobody and whatever, then they will take over it, which is unlike the states, they don't have that, which is why their 2008, nine, et cetera, look very different than ours. And I'm talking a lot. Um, what else? Uh, I said about the engineering company already in um, Collingwood. These are just random facts. Um, dun, 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 dun. The average home uh, in Canada costs 46% more than the average home in the United States. And 87% of homeowners in Canada have uh, credit scores above 700. And the average credit score is actually 765 of a Canadian homeowner. Hi, Tyler. How are you? It's the first little bubble I have recognized. Um, so more random facts. Um, so even though 71.8% of Canadians live in major metropolitan cities, 2020 is the first year that more people have left than come into major metropolitan areas. So Montreal, again, Toronto, um, what that? Vancouver. Uh, so again, 71.8% live there, but way more have left than normally. Normally they get more each year, but obviously with COVID and the borders being closed, but it is supposed to open back up again. And then they're supposed to get the 400,000 a year, each and every year. Um, that you like all the stats, Tyler. You're welcome. It's lots of numbers for my brain. Um, so millennials, so Tyler's a millennial. I'm the last year of millennial. I like to grip onto that even though I'm right at the end. Um, so of millennials, 48% of them already own a home and 25% of them actually purchased a home during the pandemic and 68% plan to move in the next five years. So it doesn't mean they're buying their first home in the next five years, but they are planning to move in the next five years. Maybe they now have a family or they want to move somewhere bigger or smaller or what have you. So more numbers for you, Tyler. And um, the average income for uh, dual, you know, like husband, wife, husband, husband, wife, wife, et cetera, in Canada is 83,900. And the average price of a home in Canada is 688,208. Okay, so people are making 83 grand and on average are spending 688. And uh, again, more random facts for you guys. These are not numbers, Tyler, so I apologize if you want more numbers. Um, but what most people have been doing during the pandemic uh, renovation-wise, so pools, outdoor space or staycation, so interlock, gazebos, etc., kitchens, bathrooms, what am I missing? Um, uh, backyard bunkies, like she sheds and uh, then workout space. So those are the most popular during the pandemic, what people have been doing. And you know how a lot of people, you know, during the pandemic, they obviously can't go to open houses and so forth. So the amount of people that have watched virtual tours has skyrocketed. So last year, 1.7 billion with a B people watched virtual tours in Canada. So that's 196,000 virtual tours are watched every hour. So a lot of people uh, look at virtual tours and are thinking of moving, etc. And then locally, because obviously I didn't say locally, I'm like Vancouver, Toronto, GTA, etc. So locally, there's been 3,760 homes sold in Simcoe thus far this year, which is 59.5% more than last year. And um, the average single family home in Simcoe County thus far this year is 759,000, which is up 38.1% over last year. And the average town home is 531, which is obviously up as well, 49.1% to be exact. And the average condo is 469 in Simcoe County, which is up over 38%, 38.6 to be exact. 
Um, and the average price in June, regardless if it was a townhome, detached, etc., was eight forty-seven and change, and that was up over thirty-six point six percent from last year. So I have more, to be honest, stats for you know Barry, etc. But that's the end of my stats for today because that's enough stats for one day. Um, my next question comes from Mandy and Alliston. So Mandy said, um, <laughs> you always seem to be in such good spirits. Do you ever have bad days? If so, what do you do when you're having a bad day? Um, thank you, Mandy, for asking. To be honest, I just like watch something on YouTube like comedians or um, funny moments on Britain's Got Talent or something like that. Or I'll go for a walk or move around a bit or whatever, do some jumping jacks or what have you. Um, just something to kind of change my state because if I just like sit there and mope and cry, it's not really going to do me much uh, good. So I like to watch something funny to like break up my whatever's going on in my head. And I also like to think, is it going to matter in three years? Because usually it's not. So let's just say something just leaked or somebody cut me off in traffic or whatever. Is it going to matter in three years that somebody cut me off in traffic? Absolutely not. Is it going to matter that my tap was leaking and I have to pay 300 bucks for a plumber or whatever? Absolutely not. So then it doesn't seem to make sense to worry about something that's not going to matter. And I want to keep no gray hair. So um, that is my answer for you. Thank you for asking, Mandy. Okay. So I'm saying Afro Nation. So there was a young man. He uh, had um, a big, huge Afro it was like 19 inches from one side to the other side and he decided at 17 he was going to enroll to go in the military and he had a best friend that had passed away in middle school from cancer so he thought okay I'm going to raise an inch not an inch raise a thousand dollars for every inch of my hair and so that was nineteen thousand dollars he ended up raising over thirty nine thousand dollars and he gave half to a children's hospital and half to a nonprofit that gives wigs for free to kids that are going through illnesses, etc., that make them lose their hair. So I obviously thought that was lovely. Um, the next question comes from Cindy and Barry. Uh, Cindy said, I have sold my home and currently looking to buy. Everything I can afford needs so much work. True. <laughs> Some of it. Uh, I heard of a mortgage plus improvement. What does this mean and do you suggest that one does that? Uh, thank you, Cindy, for asking. Um, so mortgage plus improvements is something that you could get. So let's just say, for example, you're approved for 500 or you want to shop for 500,000. Normally, mortgage plus improvements, they'll give you up to 50,000. So they're not going to give you 250,000. They will usually give 10%. Okay, so your 500,000 will give you 50,000. However, you have to approve with the debt to service ratio at that 550. So if you only approve with a debt to service ratio for that 500, they're not going to give you that extra 50,000. So therefore, you'd have to purchase less let's just say 450 or whatever, and then take that 45,000, that 10%. And then if your debt to service ratio still makes sense, then that's fine. But so many people shop right at the top of their price point, they don't usually have room to do that mortgage plus improvement. So you just have to make sure you're not already shopping at the top of your budget. And then you have to get proper you know, quotes and so forth. You can't just randomly say, oh, I'm gonna spend $42,000 on the kitchen and you go take the money to the casino. They want to see something from a contractor with letterhead, etc., saying what's going to be done, counter, backsplash, rip out, blah, blah, etc. Okay? So you can't just willy-nilly go, like I said, to the casino or buy a boat or something. Uh, but thank you for asking. So that is how that works. Um, and there's one teen in the uh, UK that I thought was pretty cool. So he... Um, I forget what it's called, a rare chromosome thing that he has, and they were told that he would never walk or talk his whole life, and he's now 18. And at the beginning of the pandemic, he said to his mom, like, can we buy my friend an iPad so I can talk to him for Zoom? And she said, well, you'd have to work for that money. And she said, what can you do that, you know, can make you money? And he said, well, I'm kind. So he started to, like, wash cars, and he started to bake pies, and he started to like collect people's uh, leftover pumpkins after Halloween and make soup for people at the homeless shelter. And he did um, uh, winter coat drives for people in the winter. He dropped off um, at Easter eggs, like at Easter, he did stuff for like Santa things and dropped off things at people's homes, etc. So as he's doing all of these things, people are starting to notice and so forth. So they started to do donations. So he ended up getting over, what was it, 41,000 in donations. 
And then he ended up, ended up starting like a disability rugby team. He ended up buying over 300 families tablets, not just his one friend um, a tablet. And he said that kindness is his superpower. So I thought that was super cute. Um, he's also given over um, a thousand roses to a thousand women. And he gives toiletries to women's shelters and so forth. So he's just a super cool little dude. He's only 18. So I liked him. Uh, the next question is from Brandy in Lafroy. And Brandy in Lafroy asked, where did she go? Wah, wah, wah. Why can't I see Brandy? Oh, there it is. I need glasses. Uh, Brandy said, I know you have Airbnbs and was wondering what the stipulations are. Can I rent a room in my house or does it have to have its own kitchen, etc.? Uh, thank you, Brandy, for asking. It does not need to have its own kitchen. I could rent out my couch if I wanted to on Airbnb. I could rent out one bedroom. They do not need to have their own bathroom. They do not need to have their own kitchen. Like I said, it could be a couch. It could be a shared space. You just have to say that on Airbnb. So Airbnb will ask, is it an entire space? If it's not, is it shared? If it's shared, do they have their own bathroom? No. Do they have their own bed? It can even be a shared bed. As weird as that sounds, you can check off anything on Airbnb. It's more common in like Europe, kind of like couch surfing that people go around for cheaper and they just like sleep on people's couches, etc. So you do not have to have separate entrance. You do not need to whatever, but obviously it's going to be cheaper than somebody that has a full apartment or a full home, etc. that they're renting on Airbnb. Okay. So thank you for asking, but yeah, you can absolutely do that. Obviously, a little more uh, enticing to people is if they do have their own door and space and bed than uh, sleeping on somebody's couch. But I appreciate you asking. Um, let's see what the next one was. I've been doing a little booklet today, and it's not as nice as my big booklet. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, how long? I have no idea how long dogs have memory. But there was this lady, um, and she had a pit bull Rottweiler cross, and I... Love pit bull dogs, but anyways, she was pregnant with her second child and a drunk driver um, smashed into her backyard and her dog was in the backyard at the time and he ran out when, you know, the, the fence was broken down and fast forward two years later, uh, which was like last week, she went to a shelter to, find, to try and find a dog for her two boys and she saw the dog that was hers from before and she recognized, like when she got closer to see if it was really him, he had a scar here and he still had it. And he remembered her, so I thought that was adorable because I love puppies and dogs. I call all dogs puppies even if they're 20. I don't know if they're 20, but like 17. I've never met a 20-year-old puppy. Anyways, I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your day. You enjoy this fantastic weather. You go after your dreams and you steer clear of people if they do not support you in your dreams and encourage you to go after them as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great week and good evening. Ciao.